what's up i'm back with another recap and review for jocelyn's cabaret season three episode eight the more the sexier so guys as usual i'm janice barb whatever you would prefer to call me just do not call me janice or barbara and today's candle of the day is Midnight Blue Citrus by Bath & Body Works. Okay, let's get right into it, shall we? So guys, this episode, um, this episode kind of like just disgusted me really, honestly. Like I just was sitting there like pretty much for a lot of it. So I'm gonna just say that, but nevertheless, episode begins where it left off last week. Oh yes, sorry. Don't mind my appearance. I'm about to work out directly after this. So that's why, that's why I'm, you know, looking like this, whatever. So that's what I was saying. The episode begins where we left off last, e last week. And that is with <clears throat> Jocelyn throwing apples, yelling at Chanel. Okay, so apparently, I guess, Jocelyn was talking to a producer or whatever, and the subject about the conversation was about the makeup artist. And Chanel went back and told him, called him and told him what was up pretty much and just gave him a heads up not to be running his mouth or whatever, I guess. And if we know from last season, that Jocelyn doesn't like when people, when the ladies go and like discuss things that were said in the house or that she said or whatever, whatever. So she was pissed, which I mean, I understand, but she didn't have to throw those apples at her. She didn't have to talk to Chanel like she was nothing. That could have honestly been a conversation. She didn't even need to showcase that in front of all the ladies. It could have been her, Chanel, the makeup artist, and Amber, because I didn't even get to that, but that, that they could have all did that. She loves to put these women on blast and make a mockery out of them, and I'm not here for it. So how Amber's tied into this whole thing is because apparently she was talking, she was talking to the makeup artist, apparently, according to him, behind the truck, whatever, you can see it on the, the camera, that and when they were speaking, she disclosed to him that they don't really need Jocelyn. She don't need her, blah, 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 whatever. So again, that's like a second pet peeve of Jocelyn. Like, you, you don't need me? You don't, this don't need me? Like, this is Jocelyn's cabaret. Like, what you mean you don't need me? <clears throat> so then she got, she was pissed more so even at, more than Chanel, she was pissed at Amber. So then Amber, she's there. She's trying to speak her piece, defend herself, whatever, whatever. Her and the makeup artist go back and forth. And I was just like, okay, I understand. I understand if someone's painting you out to be a liar, totally understand. But Amber, I wanted better for her because she, she just keeps getting to be in the middle of all of this stuff. And it's like, maybe she just is like, not that she's too emotional as a person, but I think she just cares too much or whatever, or has too high expectations for the other people in this house. She even said it, she was like, you know, no, I'm mad at, all you just because you guys don't have my back and blah blah and I'm just like why you don't expect that from them whatever because as soon as prime example Jocelyn asked the girls you're like you you guys believe her you think she said that or whatever and Lollipop's like yeah I think she said it she, all she does is talk shit like they don't have your back they don't so stop holding them to a higher standard than what they continue to show you and before we could even be done with that whole thing Amber's like walking up and she's like trying to get Jocelyn's attention and hit her or nothing like that but she like taps her on the shoulder or something like that Jocelyn whirls around and is like back up don't touch me my don't you know don't put your hands on me with your dick grabbers and blah 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 and I'm just like I understand it because you probably she's obviously and even if someone has a good intention sometimes like you don't want to be touching those moments because you could just react or I get that but it seemed like and if you have not watched Jamie That's Me's quick chat review about this, definitely go check it out because she brought up a very good point when she said that, you know, 
well, it never, we all know that Jocelyn really didn't even want to probably pick Amber from the get-go. Chanel should have had that spot from day one, but since she likes to hate, hate Chanel so much, not hate on, but she likes to hate her so much that she picked Amber instead. So since she did that out of spite or to be petty, or that probably, or she just never really saw it for her. So she took this as an opportunity to just get her out of the cabaret or just to just throw her to the side. I think that's what this was, honestly. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. But that's pretty much it. They, you know, some more things were exchanged, whatever, whatever. So after that whole thing, Amber, she's like, go to your room. Like, what? what is she, fuck, what is she like? Was she Bonnie Bella's age? Like, make it make sense. Like, makes no sense at all how she gets off treating these girls. It just, ladies, it just doesn't make sense to me, man. I'm still at a loss. So now that Amber's out and they were gonna, so that's one spot, plus they were already gonna pick another girl anyway. So who did they pick? They pick K Capri, which I was like, okay, cool, that's fine. She did a good job, not mad at it at all. Raven is the next person she picks. She did all right, whatever. She has she she has a nice look to her and stuff like that. So whatever, fine. Even though I don't like the stuff that comes out of her mouth or how she acts half the time, but not my business. <clears throat> so after that whole thing, it's also Amber's birthday, by the way, or. Raven's birthday by the way so we don't hear we hear about that throughout the entire episode <clears throat> fast forward ladies are on the bus and Lexi's passing word Lexi was pissing me off during this episode let me just say that because not yeah she was like passing word on behalf of Jocelyn in the bus and I was just like okay girl and then also going back to the ending of that whole argument and, and whatnot Lexi like, no one said anything but Lollipop, as I said before, when Jocelyn was like, do you guys believe that Amber was actually saying these things? Pop said, so said something, but no one else did. And, but then after that, as soon as Amber left and, like, the tides were turning a little bit, then Lexi got, chimes in to co-sign on everything that Jocelyn was saying or whatever, like, being, you know, her little puppet as usual. And I'm just like... I peeped that. I peeped how she be acting. <clears throat> but moving back on, they're on the bus. She says what she has to say to the girls and everyone takes it well, whatever. And she also says something surprisingly about like the money if, if you know, based on last week's episode and how once there was like all this animosity and stuff. And Lollipop was pissed off because it's supposed to be that, you know, if we all accumulated it together, we break it down and distribute it evenly amongst us. And so when Lexi brought up <clears throat> money and said her piece about that on the bus, I thought it was going to be some problems, but Lollipop didn't say anything. No one said anything. It was what it was. So meanwhile, they get to the venue i will say line it did look like there was even more people this the second night than there was even the first night so i'll give it i'll give it up for that and i'm pretty sure that's because like jocelyn kept saying before she only did 24 hours promo for it or whatever and i feel like with this type of thing people are gonna like you know hear about it hear about it from whoever went the first night see about it online and whatnot and then yeah of course they'll be like, oh, okay maybe it wasn't so bad i'm gonna go check it out so of course that that makes sense but everyone's pretty much chilling except like raven she was just like she, the way she was just talking this entire episode like it's kind of like the whole time she was like talking as if she like killed killed shit and i'm just like you know i really should have been chanel's spot but whatever like all she does is her you know a couple little moves like i said before like she has a very nice body she has a cute face like she's not bad looking or whatever she definitely has the cabaret aesthetic i i guess you could say but she doesn't know as many like moves tricks all that as a lot of the other girls or whatever i feel like so it's just like she just kind of like i guess plays up her sexy and that's fine or whatever but 
the way she was coming off this entire episode was just like kind of like she killed it or like she you know trying to have like this fake humbleness you know, I, was, I was disappointed in chanel because you know like just how she's talking was just like girl like shut up like you know your head is like as big as this room right now and you just want to keep like <clears throat> i just i know she, I, I peeped it i peeped it and they're out so then they're out back before the show starts it was k capri raven and Riri, and they're smoking, talking, whatever, and it just, I don't know, it was just, they just sounded like his asses to me. It was just, ugh, I just, like, now everyone's in a good mood since they got selected for the cabaret and whatever, and they're not all talking, looking all pitiful, sounding like haters. Like, I get it, but at the same time, it was just like, y'all are just, especially seeing the journey that they had and the things they had to endure to get to this spot, like, I don't think it was worth it, but that's just me. Mm. Y'all. It was just too much. But. <sighs> Ballistic and Jocelyn arrived. She looked great. She looked really nice. Um, I hated her. She had a, a new confessional look this week. And I hated her wig, y'all. I hated her wig. Mm, but she looked great on the red carpet. She's taking pictures and whatnot, looking like the pimp that she is. And the girls come out and join her. And it was, you know, fine for the most part. I did pick up on one thing that she said, and I was just like, why are we even doing this anymore? Like, why am I even watching this anymore? I just keep asking myself that. Yet, I'm here again for another week. But nonetheless... Jocelyn said at one point on the red carpet, she's like, yeah, they don't have to whore around anymore, you know? And I'm just like, okay. But that was also 30 seconds before she told them to pose with their butts poked out or whatever. So I'm just like, yeah, you just contradict, like, it's just weird. I don't understand. Like I said, sound like the pimp that she is. And so then she comes out, she opens up the show, of course, or whatever, and she just did not sound, I mean, we all know that the vocals don't be really hitting for, they, for what they supposed to be hitting for with, with her. We've known that for years, since her love of hip hop days, y'all. So I was just like, you know, listen to it the whole time or whatever. The, the track sounded nice. But this time I did notice also, she was giving more like vocals and singing, whatever you want to say versus like dancing really but from what I've seen in on the clips that they showed I don't know I wasn't actually there in person so I can't completely tell you but the first night the opening night I want to say like was she lip syncing or I don't remember her like singing as much but really like dancing a more so but this time it was more vocals I feel like and a little bit less dancing <clears throat> from the clips again that they showed so the ladies come out, they're dancing, of course. The I, ugh, This is the whole time I was just like, this is not a cabaret, man. I, I'm gonna look up, let, I need to look up the definition of a cabaret because at this point, I just, again, I still just don't feel like that's, I, I don't envision what I see week to week when I think of a cabaret. <clears throat> We're just gonna leave it at that. Riri lights her kitty cat on fire and K Capri proceeds to put it out with her mouth. Yeah, I said what I said. <clears throat> we'll leave it at that. And so then they're they're pouring shots in people's mouths. Jocelyn's out there dancing, whatever, whatever. Raven's got her top completely off with her botched boobs that I just really just and I'm so glad somebody else finally said something about them because I just be looking at them every week like and it's not body shaming because clearly she got some enhancements and whatever whatever it's not her natural those are not her natural she boobs decided to go up under the knife and I just don't feel like that's 100% the look that she was going for that whole lot I mm. Anyway, whatever. Afterward, we wrap up with Jocelyn singing happy birthday to Raven. She has everybody in the club singing happy birthday to Raven, whatever. She has a cake and everything, which only 
further inflates her head up. I'm pretty sure she's dancing, doing her thing or whatever. Le Lexi drops the cake by accident and Jocelyn's like, what the, she's like pissed off. Like really, we, can't even, we can never have no nice things around here. So then what does Lexi do to alleviate all that? She picks up, you know, the icing, whatever, smears it on Raven's boobs and licks it off of her nipples. Sex sells, right? Okay. But anyway, that was pretty much it, you guys. Next week, we do see that Amber, I thought she was leaving the house. I guess not. I don't understand why she, whatever. And, but she comes back and we also see that Chanel's still there, still going through her emotions and being beaten down, verbally attacked and what not i don't leave chanel please leave at this point because it's not even it's not funny at all <clears throat> and we also see that lexi's going to be in charge of the girls because jocelyn won't be there at certain parts or whatever so her head is probably about this big too at this point but anyway y'all let me know what you think of this recap and review and i will see you in the next one do not forget to like comment and subscribe let me know what you think of the recap and review and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.